Hey guys, it's me. Uh, came on from a Bible study. Um, I play some like in, in Chesham. Um, so part of my congregation. It's just um, different group, but uh, yeah, it was just very fruitful. Got me thinking. Um, it's part of a series called the Blessed Life. Um, it was session three. Um, the heart test. Um, Robert, Robert Morris, and what I liked about it is just because um, I actually been thinking, you know, because of the argument in the church about, you know, those who accept Christ Jesus are now under grace, no longer under law. Well, we're no longer under the curse of the law, but. Like trying to understand, well, not being under the law, but then the fact that the Old Testament, which basically is the law, why is it still there? It's there for a reason, and we just need to come to an understanding of like how to appropriate that. Because we may be under grace, but then it doesn't make the Old Testament scriptures any less um, validated. But anyway, um, the answer came in the form of this sermon, which is being preached, um, well, particularly around tithing. Um, it's actually interesting because um, uh, I could actually just go through the scriptures right now, but then I feel like I'm just mimicking the sermon. Um, what I really want to do is get a, a copy of the sermon that on DVD or at least borrow it um, and that locate it somewhere. So that hopefully I can just put on the link and send it to you guys. But essentially, I just found that, you know, we keep hold of, um, you know, giving 10% of our tithing earnings. Um, discussions that I've had earlier, you know, it doesn't just mean money, just like also time as well. Um, God is not necessarily after money and like the tithing. That's just like at least give tenth under the law, but then because we're under grace, you know, then we are able to do more than what the law is. I mean, remember when Jesus said, unless your righteousness surpasses those of the Pharisees, then you, then you know, then it is what it is. You shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Um, you're so, Remember, he said he did not come to destroy the law. He said he has come to fulfill it. And he gives examples of, um, you've heard that, thou shalt not commit adultery, even if you so much as look at a woman to lust after her in your heart. Then, uh, sorry, if you so much as look at a woman to lust after her, then you've committed adultery with her already in your heart. And with murder, you've heard thou shalt not murder, but um, even if you are angry with your brother without any cause, then you have committed murder in your heart. So don't even think about it. It's And now understand that the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Old Testament is still important, you know, for many reasons. And also because Jesus is grace, what he is saying, um, you know, there's a high expectation of following the law because under grace, while he has fulfilled the law fully already, so, you know, it's his merits, not ours. I mean, that's why we are first given the law, as in, have you kept this, to show how far away we are from God. But then now under grace, it's the heart that has been added to it. So when we are obeying scriptures are we doing it just out of obligation or are we obeying out of love do we actually want to obey the word of the lord um are we generally fol followers are we generally following believers genuine or is it on a religious level i mean that's the issue that jesus had raised up with the pharisees when he said, like, you know, woe unto you and went through all these things. 
But yeah, and all of that just came from, you know, Robert Morris actually explaining, well, he actually question he actually put it like this. Um, you may be under grace, but then does that mean does that make what was wrong under the law right under grace? Or then again, what was right under the law, is it now wrong under grace? Put it like that and um yeah. So that's just something that's got me thinking and yeah. So yeah. I just know because God is a good God. He does not contradict himself. I mean, he's put a stamp on his word. The word is true. All scriptures that God breathed, God inspired, everything. So, yeah. I mean, let, let, let me just get it out. Yeah, at the stage where I just want to make sure that I've memorized scripture as well. Dun, dun, dun. Please excuse me. Yeah. Um, Second Timothy. 3.16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Instruction. So, yeah. So God doesn't contradict himself. This word is his word in writing given to man so that we may write it down in a form where all can hear what God is saying, all may see what God is saying. So I just know that I just need my eyes to be open to, you know, going back to the details of the law and how it's still just so relevant to our time. I mean, I know it is relevant, but just, you know, wisdom that, you know, more understanding. I just got all that just from Robert Morris, just like, laying the groundworks for understanding there's you no know, a principle all the way through the bible that we all need to just come to grips with and accept if we are part of this fold if we are in the flock and just in, just to make way for clearing up the whole issue of tithing and on tithing it's you know under law it's 10 percent, but now under grace just be prepared for when you're steered in your heart by the Holy Spirit to just give more. So yeah, that's something I've learned. And yeah, that's just something I wanted to share um, to anyone who, you know, is probably reads more of the New Testament than they read the Old and easily believe, um, yeah, that stuff is law, not grace, but... Um, if you actually take a look at um, Malachi, Malachi 6, um, yeah, Malachi 6, 3 to 12, I actually just remembered without even getting to the, um, where the actual scriptures are, but um, just take a look at that, that is an Old Testament, and yet it is still, yeah man, you can't you can't mess around with that. Not even now in the twenty first century. So, yeah, just check that out. Um, I'll look for the sermon online if I can't find it. I think I'll check his website. Actually thinking about it. Uh yeah. Anyhow, even if I can't find it, um, you know, Pastor that he has um copy of it on DVD, that being the third session and the fourth session. So, yeah. So, yeah, can't really wait to see the next one. All right. Uh, God bless, and yeah.
since the um it's the 17th of January 2013 that I'm making this video. Alright. Good night. God bless.